Fox News is responsible for spreading an incredible amount of misinformation, disinformation, and outright propaganda. And the journalists, hosts, and executives know it. A recent public filing in the defamation lawsuit that Dominion Voting Systems brought against Fox News has revealed a variety of internal messages from Fox that show you what they really think. To help you appreciate what Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingraham, Sean Hannity, and the rest of these hosts and executives actually think. I made an AI, learned to talk like them, and then made it say their text messages, emails, and quotes from their depositions. So did Fox News really think the election was stolen? Well, Brett Beyer, then chief political correspondent for Fox, did not think so. There is no evidence of fraud, none. No evidence of fraud. Hmm. This was backed up by a variety of other Fox executives even quickly after the election. As a result of this lawsuit, there have been various depositions taken. In one of these depositions, Mead Cooper, who leads primetime programming at Fox, was asked, do you believe, as of November 6, that going on television to say that the election is being stolen would be a conspiracy theory? The answer given? I agree that this would not be based in fact at that point. Suzanne Scott, the CEO, was asked a similar question. You believe, since at least the time that Fox News called the election on November 7th, that Joe Biden was legitimately elected the president of the United States, correct? Yes, I believe that, Suzanne Scott. Even Rupert Murdoch knew what Fox was spreading was wild. He sent an email to Suzanne Scott, the CEO, where he said... Very hard to credibly claim foul everywhere. He sent an email to Suzanne Scott, the CEO of Fox, where he said... If Trump becomes a sore loser, we should watch Sean especially, and others don't sound the same. Fox executives knew that their on-air, primetime talent could not be trusted to tell the truth. Suzanne Scott would later claim that in private conversations with Sean, he told her that he knew Trump needed to concede. Rupert Murdoch, after January 6th in a communication to Suzanne Scott, had this to say. All very well for Sean to tell you he was in despair about Trump, but what did he tell his viewers? Shortly after the election was called, Fox made the decision to cancel Janine Pirro's show, saying, her guests are all going to say that the election is being stolen, and if she pushes back at all, it will just be token. That would be Fox News executive David Clark to Mead Cooper. Fox producer Justin Wells had this to say about her being taken off the air. They took her off because she was being crazy. Optics are bad, but she is crazy. At a very basic level, Fox did not believe the narrative they were planting about fraud. But besides the broad narrative about fraud, several Fox hosts started to invite on guests who began spreading very particular theories about Dominion voting systems. And even more members of the Fox staff saw problems with this. Rupert Murdoch thought it was... Really crazy stuff. He would later say to Suzanne Scott after the November 19th broadcast of Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell that this was... Terrible stuff damaging everybody, I fear. And Suzanne Scott said back to him, Yes, Sean and even Piro agrees. Even the person who they had to take off the air for being too crazy knew that the November 19th press conference with Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell was too crazy. Fox reporter Lucas Tomlinson, who is one of the reporters on the ground covering Russia-Ukraine, thought, It's dangerously insane, these conspiracy theories. Chris Citrawalt, Fox politics editor, thought, No reasonable person would have thought that. Tommy Firth, Laura Ingraham's producer, said to Ron Mitchell, a Fox executive, this Dominion shit is going to give me a fucking aneurysm. As many times as I've told Laura it's BS, she sees shit posters and Trump tweeting about it. These Fox News hosts, even when they say they don't believe this stuff, will find the thinnest pretense, shit posters and Trump, to find an excuse to spread this narrative again. One of the people most responsible for spreading these wild false narratives was Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell was a lawyer closely connected to Trump's multitude of failed lawsuits to overturn the election. And again, internally, Fox knew that what she was saying was not accurate. Tucker Carlson told his producer, Sidney Powell is lying, fucking bitch. And Tucker wasn't the only one. Laura Ingraham, in a conversation with Tucker and Sean Hannity, said, Sidney Powell is a bit nuts, sorry, but she is. Even Sean Hannity, who desperately wanted to find fraud, had this to say. 
That whole narrative that Sidney was pushing, I did not believe it for one second. Brett Beyer, chief political correspondent for Fox, had this reaction when he saw the initial broadcast where Sidney was brought on. What is this? Oh, man. Tucker Carlson had a separate conversation with Laura Ingraham that went like this. Sidney Powell is lying, by the way. I caught her. It's insane. Sydney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto with Rudy. It's unbelievably offensive to me. Our viewers are good people, and they believe it. They knew. Oh, they all knew. Because there was another conversation between Tucker and Ingraham that went something like this. I had to try to make the White House disavow her, which they obviously should have done long before. No serious lawyer could believe what they were saying. But they said nothing in public. Pretty disgusting. They all knew. So not only does a member of the news media take credit for convincing the White House to disavow nutjob and lawyer Sidney Powell, but this also shows again how clearly they knew what they were broadcasting and amplifying was not true. Fox knew at all levels that Sidney Powell was selling smoke. So why was Fox willing to do this? Because they had constructed a very loyal audience who did not want them to deviate from the line they were supposed to be on. When calling Arizona for Biden, and therefore the election, they upset their audience who had been primed by Trump's baseless statements to expect fraud. These statements endlessly amplified by Fox. And so Fox, not calling out the fraud, which again, did not exist, but Fox's audience believed it did, meant to this audience, Fox was part of the same deep state mechanism that Fox had tried to warn them about. Rupert Murdoch emailed the CEO of Fox to say, Getting creamed by CNN. Guess our viewers don't want to watch it. Irina Burganti, the Fox senior vice president for corporate communications, said, Our viewers left the week after Arizona. Suzanne Cooper to Lachlan Murdoch said, Viewers going through the five stages of grief. It's a question of trust. The Arizona call was damaging, but we will highlight our stars and plant flags, letting the viewers know we hear and respect them. Tucker said, I've never seen a reaction like this to any media company. Kills me to watch it. What was driving Fox's fear specifically is that they would lose their audience to a new upstart reactionary network like Newsmax. Tucker, in one message to his producer, said, Do the executives understand how much credibility and trust we've lost with our audience? We're playing with fire. And an alternative like Newsmax could be devastating to us. Internally, Fox knew Newsmax had problems. Executive David Clark on November 8th said, Their hosts were extremely one-sided, ignored the facts. They did not seem to care about telling the truth. They seemed to invest truly in conspiracy theories versus fact. Jay Wallace to Suzanne Scott said, The Newsmax surge is a bit troubling. Truly is an alternative universe when you watch but it can't be ignored. Sean Hannity said, In one week and one debate, they destroyed a brand that took 25 years to build and the damage is incalculable. There was this tension among some of the Fox teams where they felt they had to thread a needle, not saying too many outright falsehoods while also not losing the audience. This led Tucker to say things like, We worked really hard to build what we have. Those fuckers are destroying our credibility. It enrages me. To be clear, in case you somehow were confused, Tucker is not some defender of the truth, just a defender of the brand. When Jackie Heinrich fact-checked Trump, accurately pointing out that election fraud was not proven and the conspiracies he was spreading were baseless, Tucker said this to Sean Hannity. Please get her fired. Seriously, what the fuck? I'm actually shocked. It needs to stop immediately. Like tonight, it's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is down. Not a joke. Not a joke. A reporter reporting and telling the truth hurt the stock price so they deserve to be fired. That is Tucker Carlson to you. He continued with, I just went crazy on meat over it. To which Sean responded, Already sent to Suzanne with a really? And then Sean told his team, I just dropped a bomb. And Suzanne eventually sent an email. Sean texted me. He's standing down on responding, but not happy about this and doesn't understand how this is allowed to happen from anyone in news. She has serious nerve doing this, and if this gets picked up, viewers are going to be further disgusted. The next morning, Jackie had deleted the accurate tweet. Fox News viewers are disgusted when reporters tell the truth if it contradicts their narcissistic god king. And Fox News executives and hosts are fully aligned with that as long as it helps their stock price. The only reason Tucker worried even briefly about Fox's credibility is because he thought eventually that loss of credibility 
may hurt their stock price and the value of their brand. Tucker did not want the truth out there. Sean did not want the truth out there. They wanted Fox to appeal to the base of fools and malcontents they had cultivated. And they knew that her tweet, despite being accurate, meant that those same malcontents would turn on Fox. Similar things happened when Kristen Fisher fact-checked the disastrous Rudy Giuliani Four Seasons interview. Fisher's boss, Brian Boughton, emphasized to her that Fox executives were not happy and that she had to do a better job of respecting our audience. Suzanne Cooper at one point said, you can't give the crazies an inch right now. They are looking for and blowing up all appearances of disrespect to the audience. And in another one, the audience feels we crapped on them and we have their trust and belief in us. We can fix this, but we cannot smirk at our viewers any longer. Now, part of the reason this needle ended up being so hard to thread for them is that they had tied their fortune to a self-aggrandizing, self-obsessed, selfish fool. When Rupert Murdoch discussed Newsmax, he said, These people should be watched if skeptically. Trump will concede eventually, and we should concentrate on Georgia, helping any way we can. We don't want to antagonize Trump further, but Giuliani taken with a large grain of salt. Everything at stake here. They were all terrified that Trump would turn on them and that would be the final undoing of Fox News. As soon as they called Arizona for Biden, the Trump team began reaching out directly to Fox. Bill Salmon, managing editor of the Washington Bureau, got a text from a Trump team member saying, way too soon to be calling Arizona. He then received a call from Mark Meadows after that. Tucker had these things to say about Trump. What Trump's good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. We've got to be incredibly careful right now. We could get hurt. At one point, when Tucker was describing Trump, he described him as a... A demonic force, a destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. Fox News was willing to knowingly sacrifice the truth and democracy for their bottom line.